This video is sponsored by RenderHub, and they are hosting the Winter Fantasy IV Render Contest, which we will talk about in a moment. Blender 5.0 is a game changer for color, simply because this update introduces native support for ACES and HDR display output, bringing Blender's color management in line with professional film and VFX standards. So what is this update about exactly, and how can you take advantage of it? Before we continue, I want to take a moment to highlight RenderHub's latest art challenge, the Winter Fantasy IV Render Contest. RenderHub regularly hosts 3D art contests to help the community showcase their skills and connect with fellow artists. The contest offers $1,900 in cash prizes, and the fun part is that everyone gets something. The top three winners, honorable mentions, and even funny or creative entries. The best part, you can use any 3D software that you want. All you have to do is to register for free, join the RenderHub community, and submit your artwork before the deadline on December 31st. Your piece should follow the winter and fantasy theme, with creativity and originality in mind, and you can find the full judging criteria in the link in the description. And while you are there, take a look at the previous contest, or browse the community gallery, who knows, you might find inspiration for your own entry. I also almost forgot to mention the marketplace. It is packed with great assets from 3D models to textures, HDRIs, animations, and even mocap, which you can use to take your artwork to the next level. You will find all the links in the description down below. And now back to the video. Simply put, with this Blender 5 update, you will get more accurate, consistent colors, and the ability to work with a much wider range of brightness and color than ever before. It is actually a big step from the earlier versions of Blender, which relied on the older filmic color profile. And now, you have industry standard options built right in, which is actually exciting. So, if you've ever struggled with your renders looking different compared to other software, or maybe on high-end monitors, Blender 5 is actually solving that. You see, Blender now introduces ACES 1.3 and 2.0 view transforms as alternatives to its default AGX and filmic view, which is great for studios using ACES in their pipeline, you know, there are currently some studios, especially some small VFX shops, using Blender and this can help. But what does that mean for you? Well, essentially you can enable ACES inside Blender without jumping through hoops. This ensures that your renders use the same color technology that big studios use. For example, colors that used to be out of range or look dull in standard sRGB can now be represented correctly, resulting in rich and more vibrant images. And here's the kicker. You can even use ACES CG, the ACES color gamut for CG work, or maybe REC 2020 as your workflow color space, taking advantage of a much wider palette of colors while lighting and texturing. And the outcome is actually huge. This translates to fewer surprises when moving between Blender and other software. So I will put it like this. What you see in Blender's viewport will match what you see in compositing or editing tools using ACES. Another headline feature of Blender 5 is true HDR rendering in the viewport and image outputs, enabled by Blender's new Vulkan backend. So if you have an HDR capable monitor, Blender can now display those eye-popping highlights and deep shadows in all their glory. You see, in previous versions, even if your scene had high dynamic range lighting, Blender would tone it down to fit a normal screen. But now, with HDR support, a bright car headlight for example, or neon sign in your scene can appear truly bright, especially on an HDR display, you know, making your previews and renders much more faithful to real-world lighting. And interestingly enough, Blender 5 supports the main HDR output formats. You can set your display view to Rec 2100 PQ or Rec 2100 HLG, which are the standard used in HDR10 and HDR content. This means you can do color grading or lighting tweaks for HDR directly inside Blender, and trust that what you will see is what you will get in an HDR video export. To take advantage of HDR in Blender, there are a few things to note. First, you will need to run Blender with the Vulkan Graphics backend, which is the newer and more advanced graphics API, instead of the old OpenGL. On Windows and Linux, Blender 5.0 gives you the option to switch to Vulkan in the preferences. In fact, using Vulkan is required to unlock 10-bit color and HDR output, especially on those platforms. Linux users have an extra step. HDR output only works on Wayland sessions, 
due to how Linux handles HDR windows. On the other hand, Mac users will get a bit of a break here. So if you are on macOS with an Apple Silicon device, Bender's HDR should work just fine out of the box, thanks to metal under the hood. And of course, you also need an actual HDR monitor. And once everything is set up, and your operating system HDR mode is enabled, Bender's viewport and rendered images can be shown in HDR, allowing you to see details in super bright areas and very dark shadows that simply weren't visible before. So what do these color management upgrades mean for your everyday work? For one, better pipeline compatibility. You see, many studios and artists use ACES in their production pipeline to maintain consistent color from 3D rendering to compositing to final grading. And with Blender 5.0, you can now seamlessly integrate with these pipelines, which means you don't have to manually configure open color I.O. or guessing how to match Blender's colors to other software, which is actually saving you a lot of time and effort in addition to being more accurate. And Blender's built-in ACES 1.3 and 2.0 support makes it significantly easier to dovetail into modern film, TV, and VFX workflows. So if you are handing off your renders to a compositor or working alongside other 3D tools, you can export your image in ACES Color Space or even OpenAXR in ACES CG or ACES 2065-1 and trust that the colors will line up perfectly. As you might have guessed, this removes a lot of trial and error and potential color shift headaches in post-production. Even for a solo artist, using ACES can improve the look of your work because it handles extreme lighting and saturation more gracefully, giving you a natural feel to high contrast scenes. In addition to this, the combination of ACES and HDR support leads actually to enhanced visual output. So when you create a scene with intense lighting, say sunset with blazing highlights or seen full of bright LED lights, or maybe signs. Blender can now preserve that intensity all the way through the final output on an HDR screen. The result is images and animations that actually look more lifelike and punchy. On a practical level, you will notice fewer issues like color banding or clamped whites when working with these white color spaces and higher bit depths. So Blender 5 color pipeline is truly seen referred and has a dynamic range. I mean, it can present the actual brightness values of your scene until the moment of display. In the compositor, new tools like the Convert to Display node help you manage these color conversions, ensuring that what you composite will appear correctly in the target display space, be it standard sRGB or HDR, without nasty surprises, which is actually annoying. All of this gives you as an artist far more control, so you can confidently grade your shots for HDR delivery inside Blender or simply enjoy more headroom when adjusting exposure and contrast in post, since the image data isn't getting squashed by a limited color range. I would also say that Blender 5 ACES and HDR support underscores that Blender is actually leveling up for high-end productions, which is something that we are seeing happen gradually. And it is not just about the fancy jargon. It tangibly improves the creative experience. Imagine rendering a sparkling scene of a city, that is, at night. Previously, those bright billboards and streetlights would be toned down on your screen. But now, if you have an HDR display, they will glow brightly as they would in real life. And if you're working on an animation destined for HDR streaming or film, you can do your look development and final tweaks in Blender itself, confident that the result will meet professional delivery specs. Even if you are not delivering an HDR, the benefits of a better color management workflow, like more accurate previews and easier color grading, are still applicable to a standard project. And generally speaking, Blender 5's new color capabilities are actually a big deal, and they can add a lot of practical quality of life upgrades. So if you are a Blender artist, this will make it way easier to do your creative work compared to before, and will give you a stunning and color accurate renders that will actually hold up from your monitor all the way to the big screen. Or I can put it like this, Blender is now speaking the same color language as the rest of the professional graphics industry. And this is actually great news for all of us creating 3D art. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.